When your main object, let's say, is epilepsy, then asking for sleep issues would come like uh, several questions later. And then if the consultation is shorter, probably this is lost. Sleep disorders are common, but more common in people with an epilepsy. Today, hear about research into the correlation between epilepsy and sleep disorders with a focus on bruxism or teeth grinding with neurologist, Ministry of Health advisor, Samson Kachatrian, who will tell us all about his research into the topic. Yeah, it's a interesting field and the interaction is quite strong, uh, sometimes ignored or many times ignored, I feel, uh, because sleep yeah. is not on the first, I think, page of different documents uh, created. <laughs> I'm yeah. happy that uh, my colleague from Italy, a uh, very famous uh, uh, professor, Lino Nobili, was pushing this um, sleep and epilepsy connection, important issue into the uh, spotlight. And they had this uh, recent paper um, on the importance of this interaction and exploring some different aspects of it in a, a special position paper. Uh, so it was good. And there are uh, some groups uh, around North America and uh, Europe and also some other parts of the world working on this. And it's really, uh, we feel that uh, it's very important uh, both on the role of sleep in epilepsy and also vice versa like how epilepsy interacts with sleep. This is more like a neurophysiology issue, but also we forget about a big, big field of uh, primary sleep disorders, which can also interact uh, with epilepsy in terms of its course, its uh, uh, impaired control uh, on seizures, etc. Sometimes it's not really checked well, I feel, uh, on how this aspect uh, interacts with this um, drug-resistant or drug medically intractable aspect of epilepsy. So this is very important. Mm, so I'm interested in this uh, uh, field as well. And we published some uh, interesting data from my um, doctoral thesis uh, on uh, the fact that uh, prevalence is quite high. And while we already knew about the high prevalence of, for example, sleep apnea uh, or insomnia among epilepsy patients, uh, but we never really looked into some other groups uh, like uh, sleep-related movement uh, disorders. And uh, we provided some newer information about restless leg syndrome and specifically sleep bruxism among epilepsy people. So um, it's an ongoing work. Many other groups uh, really replicate each other on this. So it becomes uh, like stronger on its scientific basis. Uh, so this uh, means that uh, in the epilepsy practice, uh, this should be addressed somehow. So this is our idea to strengthen this and move forward with the groups who work in this field. Okay, this is a bit selfish, but just to put things into perspective, I, I'm, as a person with epilepsy myself, I've had problems with my sleep my whole life. I just can't get to sleep and I have really bad nightmares, and it, which affects quality of sleep. And then um, getting up in the morning is so hard because I'm so exhausted because of all the other factors of the disease, right? And then when you have a sort of try to have a regular, if there is such a thing, sort of life with, a, you know, a job and things like that, and you have to get up in the morning, I tell you what, when I had a, I was employed by another company, I would have way more seizures because I just couldn't have the sleep when I needed to. Whereas like now I can I can have a nap after our chat or, or whatever, just to try and minimize seizure frequency. But then another thing which he said where I just went, oh my goodness, and I was so glad you brought it up, was bruxism or tooth grinding. And again, that's yes. something I have experienced most of my life. I've hardly any teeth left. And it really affects like if you have a headache in the morning and then your productivity in the day and how you feel mentally, which then affects your likelihood of having seizures, of course. So all of that is so interlinked and I'm so happy that you are looking into that. Um, I think it's a topic that is not covered enough. Happily, I can say that this year uh, I proposed a symposium 
uh, for like usually we propose some symposia for the coming uh, big congresses and at the European Academy of Neurology Congress in Budapest uh, occurring in July we will have a special session on this issue and this is uh, really great that I had uh, collaborators from different countries to help me with this and present the various uh, sides of this uh, interaction. Uh, uh, it, it's even uh, an issue to convince uh, neurologists to look into that. So we, we will need to do this also for the specialists first. Why do you think it's an issue to convince other neurologists to broach this topic? Yeah, because uh, overall, when your main uh, object, let's say, is epilepsy, then probably sleep, asking for sleep issues would be it would come like uh, several questions later and then if the consultation is shorter probably this is lost so this is the main idea to reserve at least one question for the consultation uh, for sleep <laughs> i i feel that you like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's not brought up enough and then especially when you mentioned the bruxismal tooth grinding as well we tried to let's say hypothesize uh, in our paper on the possible links because this was the first report and then it was reported by an italian group um, as well and then uh, probably appeared in some others but uh, it's not that easy to understand this link with the movement disorders like uh, bruxism and restless leg syndrome but it is there and we will need to go further in understanding this link. this will help of course for the management of epilepsy Otherwise, we will declare any uh, epilepsy patient with the uh, omitted uh, RLS diagnosis or some other sleep uh, disorders uh, as uh, intractable, but this is not the case. Right. And I wonder if, so for instance, sorry, go back to myself, but for post surgery, I was having, you know, a number of tonic clonics, which I, I kind of expected, but then I significantly reduced my number of tonic clonics by getting more sleep. So how do I get more sleep, improve quality of sleep? You know, that's kind of like a bit of a challenge for refractory epilepsy. It's like, well, you know, sticking my middle finger up to, in a rude way, to the epilepsy, it's still there, but I'm minimizing the impact of it by just trying to get more sleep or trying to get more rest, even if it's not quality of sleep. Just having more rest, I think, really helps patients. But again, we live in a real world, so how do you achieve that? That's another thing to consider, isn't it? It's not that easy, I understand it. It's a cultural thing, probably different populations have different approaches to this. Yes, this is, of course, a complex issue. If people would like to learn more about your sleep um, uh, and your, the work regarding the epilepsy and sleep and movement disorders and bruxism, what, what should they do? In Armenia, we're trying to have some sort of um, podcasts or online posts uh, at least in Facebook or some other platforms to inform on the developments on new papers. Uh, so people are sometimes quite interested in this aspect. Uh, we try to interact of course with the colleagues uh, to let them know about the work, engage them into it. Uh, we have some interested students and residents who are really uh, involved and they are convinced with the idea and this is good uh, for the future. At the moment I'm finalizing my um, doctoral thesis so probably with this we will have some more publications and more occasions to talk about this in, uh, both on local level and also of course international level. Overall I think uh, we will need to increase the interaction with the international field. So uh, in Armenia, it's like whenever you invite someone from abroad, uh, it gets more power, whatever message you want to deliver. So it's it's normal. It's it's normal. It's, uh, I think, at many places. Uh, and we try to do it, uh, organize some uh, events, uh, invi inviting international speakers. Uh, we have good collaboration with Georgian uh, colleagues uh, doing uh, regional uh, teaching courses on epilepsy uh, with uh, changing places in Georgia and Armenia. So um, we will, uh, I think, move forward very well in the coming years. Cool. And uh, I was thinking you're not, you're not too, too far away, but there's four hours uh, difference between us, but it's just one flight away. So we live in a smaller world. Thank you very much for joining us, Samson. It's been really, really interesting. Thank you. 
Thank you again to Samson for sharing with us his knowledge and research into sleep disorders amongst those with an epilepsy, specifically in this case, bruxism. Mm-hmm.